Why are some explanations better than others? I'm going to talk about some explanatory virtues. Uh, today I'm going to talk about difficulty to vary of explanations and why that makes an explanation good if it is difficult to vary. Difficulty to vary is a feature of an explanation that describes how easy or hard it is to modify the internal workings of an explanation. And uh, good explanations tend to be difficult to vary. The reason that this is a good feature of an explanation is because it makes the explanation slice quite thinly. Uh, it makes it generate predictions. Um, it makes it clear the way in which it integrates with our background knowledge. And um, it also makes the explanation easier to show wrong in order to move on to better explanations, right? So I'm gonna highlight that with an example. So the example is a bias dice, a dice that we keep rolling and it keeps landing on one particular side. Maybe it lands occasionally on other ones, but in general it's landing on one side. And we can come up with a few explanations as to why this might be happening. So imagine we're rolling six again and again and again, and I think, well, why is that happening? Maybe the dice has been biased by someone drilling a hole in the opposite side to the six and filling that hole with a weighted concrete heavier material such that the dice keeps rolling and falling uh, with the six facing up. Okay, so this explanation is quite good because it's, it, it, it's difficult to vary in terms of its content and predictions. So, um, for example, if, the di if we keep rolling the dice and it starts landing on sides other than the six, well then we've quite clearly shown that the explanation is wrong in some way. Um, we can also investigate the dice and find out the way you know, find out whether there's any kind of modifications to it that we can see visibly or anything like that. So we can test it in that way. And it generates further predictions about ways we can modify other dice. So it means that I can kind of get a different dice, see if I can bias it by um, trying to manipulate it in the way that the explanation says. Um, and if that doesn't work, if that doesn't bias the dice in the right kind of way, again, I will have shown this explanation to be wrong in some way. Um, and it also integrates with our background knowledge about the world and causality and how that works in quite a neat way without introducing um, various new assumptions that are just as mysterious as what I'm trying to explain. I can make appeal to this background knowledge in my explanation to integrate my knowledge um, about why this dice is biased. Let's compare that to another explanation, right? The explanation that God is miraculously intervening on each roll of the dice in order to produce a six. By contrast to the other explanation, this explanation is quite easy to vary because it has high internal degrees of freedom. There are a lot of things that we can change about God's uh, causal powers and God's desires in order to explain the phenomena. So let me uh, go on to clarify what I mean by that. Imagine we continue to roll the dice and it stops landing on a six. It lands on a three, then a two, then a one, and we actually struggle to produce a six again. Well, how does our explanation handle this case? Well, we can either say, well, God just didn't desire in those cases to miraculously intervene, or maybe we can say um, that God instead changed his favorite number, and so now he wants a three, then a two, then a one. And uh, this shows that this explanation is actually difficult to generalize in the way that the other one would, the other explanation would generalize. It's difficult to falsify and prove wrong because we can modify it always in accordance with background knowledge. And um, it's also difficult to generalize in the sense of, if you know, if I want to bias another dice in some kind of way or do something in the world, manipulate the world, engage in engineering or something, I can't really use this because it's not clear how it is that um, I invoke God's causal powers or desires to manipulate or engage in some situation. Further, there's also the um, additional assumptions that the theory builds in that are kind of new to our knowledge. So these would be about the way that a uh, non-physical um, disembodied mind somehow causally interacts with the world in certain cases, why it is that God cares about some things rather than other things, and all of these are just as mysterious, if not more so mysterious, than the thing we're trying to explain in the first place. Now there's some other sort of explanatory uh, virtues and voices going on in these two cases that I'll come to talk about in future short episodes, but you can see here how how easy or difficult the explanation is to vary here um, makes one of these explanations a good one that slices thinly, you know, it puts its neck on the line, so to speak, in terms of being falsified and also makes itself 
generalizable and integrate with our background knowledge by doing so. And the other explanation basically does no such thing. By being easy to vary, it accommodates any data and it's consistent with any outcome and we can't really do anything with it. Um, so hopefully that helps you to understand why difficulty to vary is an explanatory virtue.